Hello and welcome to my first devlog <laughs> I ever did. Um, I'm not really good at this, so um, bear with me here. But I really wanted to to get into like um, YouTubing my game dev progress. So here we go. So a few weeks ago, I had this awesome idea, and it was let's make a game. Of course, <laughs> we all we, we all, we've all been there. So. Um, I immediately started up GameMaker Studio 2 and clicked a new project and nope, that's wrong. That's a really bad practice. <laughs> the first thing you always need to do before diving headfirst into a project is planning. That's always step one. Planning um, your general idea, your genre, your mechanics, the setting, the story. And most importantly, the scope of the game. And many more things. Because we all know the common um, problem or the common, <laughs> yeah, like problem all game devs encounter, like especially indie devs, but also AAA is scope creep. And we, 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 blah, sorry, we, we really want to avoid that. We really want to avoid scope creep. And you do this by planning it out. A good thing um, to do, always. So my general idea was making a Game Boy-like game, like not an actual Game Boy game, but something that could have, like, could could be on a Game Boy. And it should be a 2D platformer because it's my favorite genre. And it should be it should have a light story, like nothing too crazy with plot twists and anything, but it should all be tied together with a story. So, a good program uh, or good tools for um, like planning your project beforehand is whiteboard and flowchart apps. I'm using Drawio, which I think is awesome, hashtag not sponsored, but you can really get into planning with all the like pictograms, arrows, text and everything. You can really find your your own style of planning it um, the way I did it I um, like divided it into chunks my first chunk was ideas and guidelines where I wrote down like the general idea and like corner like some like cornerstones uh, I want to follow um, like the Game Boy restrictions I want to follow and stuff the next thing the next chunk is the genre and gameplay and this is really important to combat scope creep. So I really planned out how many worlds, how many levels, how many distinct enemies per world. And then I actually planned out each level, like gave it, gave it a little name or label for all the worlds and all the levels. And this really helps with getting uh, more variety. So you don't just make four forest levels, but you really think beforehand what kind of different forest levels you want to make, for example. And the next thing is a story. <laughs> I blurred a bit out at the end, so I didn't want to spoil the whole story. It's not like it has these huge plot twists, but whatever. But the, the general, um, general premise of the game is you're a mutated pig that, that was fed some chemicals and then you mutated and then you go onto, the ramp, onto a rampage against humanity. So that's the general idea. All right. So then once again, I opened Game Maker Studio, clicked a new project and yes. Once we planned everything, this is actually what we do. Then we can really dive in because we have all the cornerstones laid out. So the first thing I always do in Game Maker Studio 2 is like set the room, uh, like the room dimensions. And for that, I first and foremost needed the um, Game Boy uh, resolution, which is 160 by 144 pixels. But if we visualize it, it's kind of squarey. It's not really a square, but uh, like uh, modern monitors are all widescreen. So I thought about taking the common widescreen resolution of 2560 by 100, uh, 1440 and just divide it by 10. So 
I stay at the 14040 pixel height of the screen, but just get a little more space uh, on either side, like left and right. But yeah, if you visualize it, it's actually widescreen, it's actually 16 to 9. But I think to capture the actual Game Boy feeling, I want to stick with the actual um, screen resolution. Um, yeah, just makes makes the makes a lot of <laughs> Game Boy uh, feeling this this square screen or yeah. But a problem with the actual screen resolution is if you walk around in it, like if the sprites move in it, they move a huge chunk each pixel they move because the modern screens we're playing on are much bigger and don't have all this smear the old Game Boy screens had. So it looks a lot um, chalk, chalkier, chump, look, choppier, choppier. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a, lit, a little bit jittery when things move around in it. So what I wanted to do was take the screen resolution, uh, multiply it by four to this resolution. So um, I, I keep the actual pixel count uh, pixel density of the sprites but for a sprite to move an actual Game Boy Pixel it has four pixels to move which smooths things out considerably really. So I set my room to this resolution. The only thing I have to think about then is like take my actual sprites. I, I created my graphics program with the actual pixel count and just multiply it when importing into GameMaker as well. But you can do this natively in GameMaker Studio, just scale it, um, keep the aspect ratio, scale it like percentage-wise, or you can type in the pixels and you're set. Speaking of pixels, the general or standard um, sprite size is 8x8 eight eight pixel from the Game Boy, which is pretty small. Because if we take my little blob we had for, for the example right now, this little featureless blob um, already fills up the 8x8 space, like almost, and there's no details whatsoever. And I'm not a pixel artist, I, I really struggle with, <laughs> with details in pixel art, so the, the smaller the sprite, the harder time I have. So, But if you take, for example, Wario Land, this block right here is already considered, uh, already built from um, four 8x8 sprites, so it's 16x16, 16 16, this one block. Um, if you take the four blocks here, it's 32x32, 32 32, which is pretty much the size of the Wario sprite. So thinking about the actual Game Boy hardware could do something like that, I think I can get away with doing it as well. <laughs> So, the next thing I want to talk about is colors. Um, the Game Boy colors, the original Game Boy colors, according to um, Wikipedia, are really, really green. But taking the Game Boy Pocket colors, there's just grayscale. It's a bit uninteresting, and also the contrast is pretty harsh. So you have an actual black and an actual white pixel there. Um, and I didn't like either of them for my game. So. I really try to make my own palette, which which captures like the feel, like what what to my eyes the screen of, for example, a Game Boy Pocket looked like when playing it with the natural light shining into it. So I came up with my own palette, and I'm pretty happy with it. It's not, it doesn't have like these harsh contrasts, and it's pretty pretty easy on the eyes, and I really like it. I really like how it turned out. But there's even more restrictions. There's a max number of uh, sprites, like 40 or something. And also max number of sprites per line, like per scan line, which is 10. And only three colors per sprite, not four, like three, three of the colors plus transparent. But um, original Game Boy hardware got around this by stacking sprites. So they also could use four colors per sprite. So I think I'm good using four colors per sprite plus transparent. All right, 
Back into Game Maker Studio 2. Once I set up the room, I set these layers, uh, set the layers for it. So I set a UI layer, um, which all the UI elements should be located. Then the instances, which is for the game logic, where the actual enemies and players and blocks for the collisions move around. And then we have two asset layers, one for the foreground graphics and one for background graphics. I think that should suffice. I then uh, code a little game object, which just had some um, quality of life things, uh, like restarting the room with a button press and escape for quitting the game. Um, yeah, because I don't want to Alt F4 all the time. And with this little code down here, I check for all the devices, all the controllers I got uh, attached to my PC so I can use either of them and don't have to find like device number zero for, for testing my game all the time. I then put up these uh, this little script player control um, where I defined all the buttons you'll be able to press like the B button, A button, left, right, up, down and implemented checks for the keyboard and also for the gamepad so I can test it on keyboard and gamepad as well. And so it's pretty generalized so I don't have to to yeah like put all these if statements for jumping or anything so I can it have it just like there. Um, just like that. Like I don't have if I want to jump I don't have to have a keyboard check and gamepad check. I can't just check for these variables. All right, things I want my player to do before I can get started is idling, running and jumping. There's a lot more I want to implement later on, but for getting started, getting the game going, I really want to implement these three states first. Um, yeah, and this time I really wanted to have the graphics first approach because it's probably more clever to have like a white box um, approach like make a little blocky character and just blocks for the environment and start with the logic like jumping and the collisions but I really wanted to get the Game Boy vibe going so I, I couldn't help myself and I started with the graphics first. So I drew this little pig, this mutated pig, I want to be the player character, but I wasn't really happy, so I made another iteration which turned out which turned out better, but still not quite there. My third iteration was horrible, it just looks looks like this mutated mole thing. And yeah, we don't want to talk about the mutated mole thing anymore. So back to the drawing board and this was my final result, and I'm pretty happy. As I said, I'm not a not a good pixel artist or by any stretch so I'm really happy how this pick turned out I just uh, adjusted the colors for my my soothing palette and I was ready to go approved so then I hacked in some some animations for idling for running and for jumping and falling which is just one sprite and loaded everything in game maker with the different um, like underscore fall, underscore idle, so I can change through them. And then I um, yeah, defined the collision mask, which I put pretty pretty lenient, but I don't like it if you like touch a spike with one pixel of your hand and you're dying. So I wanted to put it a bit lenient. I'm not sure if this is what I will stick to, but for now, that's it. And now Let's see how the um, yeah how the animations turned out. Pretty awesome, huh? So for code, I just put some code for the animation changes and the walking um, in the idle state or the, the running state, and that's yeah, just some logic so you can jump. And if you're wondering what the war state jump or change state to jump is all about, uh, I'm talking about state machines. Because if you have this uh, so-called spaghetti code, where you have a lot of if statements, else statements, um, 
that's pretty much what most beginners do and <laughs> believe me I know I did this too so if you're on the ground then animation this and if not animation that and so so far so good but the more you add the more uh, complicated everything gets like if you're on the ground and running or if you're on the ground and not running and so on and yeah the more mechanics you add the more complicated spaghetti code gets and it's really it really becomes pretty difficult to manage so if you're thinking about adding running jumping falling wall jumping crouching punching shooting getting hit climbing a ladder and so on and so forth you get the idea and this is still pretty simple stuff everything i i consider adding to my game boy -y game so imagine something more complex like like some fighting game or devil may cry with all the combos it it pretty much become becomes unmanageable and this is where state machines come in so in state machines you have like these different states defined which are just like containers and this is like the running container and all the code you need for running around come gets into gets put into this container and you do this for jumping for attacking and all the other mechanics you have and so you don't you only ever have to think about the code the, that directly in impacts your your state you're in and then you just check for if your state is running you execute the running script if your state is jumping you execute the jumping script and if your state is attacking you execute the attacking script so and this is what something like that could look like in game maker studio but i probably will do an actual tutorial for it how you do how you implement state machines in game maker studio too but yeah it would pretty much um um, explode this video to ungodly lengths. So once this was implemented, I put together a code for jumping with coyote time and jump buffering and all the all the cool stuff that you need, all the like quality of life stuff that players otherwise get frustrated about. And yeah, put together a collision script which just checks the trajectory of your player and adjust your speed and direction so you don't hit anything and it's pretty simple it's just a few lines of code but it works great it it prevents my player character pretty much completely from running into any or getting stuck into any walls or grounds or ceilings or whatever so all this put together i just made a few placeholder graphics for like this temple area i won't use it in the actual game but whatever so I have the background, the foreground, and then the player character and semi-transparent blocks that get blended out. Or not blended out, you know what I mean. Um, yeah, like for, for the actual collision logic. And with all this set up, it's finally time to run the game. And it looks fantastic in my opinion. I'm really happy with it. Um, and I'm really happy or really excited to see where this is going to to get. So, but for now I think that's all about my first devlog. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in um, like also seeing where everything will go, consider subscribing. Thank you so much again and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!